Okay, crypto nerds, let's get right to it. What I'm going to talk about is the Artificial Superintelligence Alliance and do an update on it, on what's going on. And just focus on two main things. One, why did they do it? And two, what are they doing now? Is it, let's say, working? And this isn't coming from my mouth. It's coming from, they did a Spaces recently, I believe on Twitter. And then they did uh, an interview on YouTube, the chairman. And we'll get into that as well and answer those two questions. My disclaimer, I'm a big dumb animal. Don't do what I do. Informational purposes only. This is November 25th. Thanksgiving's coming up. And we all know what that means. I hope everyone sees family, has a great time, eats lots of turkey. And of course watches Arnold Schwarzenegger movies because that's what you do on Thanksgiving or the day before or the day after pretty much. Get to the chopper, grab the crypto, put the crypto in the chopper. So Super Intelligence Alliance, ASA. You're probably all familiar with this. Why am I doing this video? I'm doing it because I own Fetch and I own two of these before they merged and I haven't paid that much attention in the last couple of weeks. So I wanted to sort of circle back around and see how things are going. So let's first talk about the first of two things. Why did they do it? Now, that's kudos. We'll get to that in a second. Of the three, the gentleman who spoke in the interview, and you'll see his face here. Here's his name. I believe it's Humayun. He was the CEO of Fetch. I guess he still is. And the chairman of the Alliance. And he explained it very well and simply between these three. He essentially said, uh, I believe he was talking about tokens, but... I think he was also talking about the technology. There's not a, a lot of overlap in what they do. They're very complementary, and they each provide a different layer of the technology stack so that people can build the end product. So let's talk about that. The first is, he says, the data layer, of course, and that was Ocean Protocol. Then the algorithm was Singularity Net, and the application layer was the Fetch AI. And they put those three together to make the full stack. And what they realized was that they also needed a compute layer, of course. So that's why they ended up recently also merging and bringing in Kudos. And if you see, for example, I believe it's on their the other Twitter banner here, Singularity Not Net, Ocean, Fetch AI, and Kudos. And they talked about Kudos they believed was very undervalued. from So from a merger and acquisition standpoint, they looked at someone who was providing a lot of value, a lot of compute power in this space, but they believed was very undervalued. So that I believe was a, a great acquisition for them. So that was the compute layer. And they happened to mention, he said that since Kudos was brought into the fold, so to speak, there was a 200% utilization increase in the Kudos services which yielded a 470% revenue increase. And they said the additional value would flow through to the ASA Alliance. Eventually, it's not yet reflected, he didn't believe, in the token price, but that will happen over time. So that appears to be an excellent acquisition from the standpoint of, A, it was undervalued. So of all the ones in the space, it made sense. And B, it provided that other piece so that they can be a one-stop shop, and that's what we'll get to. So they've always been operating these four by themselves, and then they merge them together. If you've ever been involved or seen mergers, sometimes they don't go well. There's a lot of really well-known ones that they tried to put together with large companies, and they just didn't mesh, and they ended up breaking up. So they sat by themselves. Now what are they doing? And here's what's interesting. He did a great job in the interview, but if you look at their Twitter space here, on their Twitter, they talked about 10 most pressing questions from the recent ASI Alliance. I'm just gonna fly through these. If you know there's a PAL potential merger, that didn't happen, but they still work with them. But most importantly, here it is. The very last thing here, and I'll put a link to this, this tweet. Uh, what are the current products actively under development from the Alliance? Okay. So in other words, now that all three of you together, well, are you playing nice in the same sandbox and are you building independent castles and smashing each other's or are you building one big castle together? They're building one big castle together and they seem to be getting along. So ASI, they've got these three pieces. They call it the create layer, the learn, or I guess they don't call it a layer. I guess I did. They call it ASI create, ASI learn and ASI train. 
So the create portion, they talk about what it does here. It uses a lot of big words. But essentially what he said in the interview was that the create product is the consumer facing product being what the developer is going to interact with. You're going to be able to build applications and create these agents, a network of agents underneath that to go execute these tasks. The developers can build applications using their underlying architecture without dealing with what's underneath, of course, and they're going to create applications using the stack and the stack consists of learn and train. The learn product, which makes complete sense, essentially it's a learning loop. You've created this agent, it's having interactions, it's gathering data. What do you do with the data? You feed it back through the AI loop, so to speak. So that's the learn product. All right, then you've got the ASI train. The train, I thought it was very interesting the way he explained it. I'm looking at my notes here. He said, look, we're going to build machine learning models, MLMs, which we're all familiar with when it comes to AI. But he had a point that I didn't think about. He said, look, that's just language. They're going to create different foundational models for each vertical. So he mentioned, which was interesting, for example, a physics vertical. Well, a basic MLM, when it's just language, may not be able to do the computational physics but if you create a model and you train it then you can create a model within that industry and then he has the other one was like robotics as a vertical so you being the developer are dealing with the create product but you need to it's going to be accessing these other layers particularly the one that has the data and the information that it has to pull from in order to provide answers and a basic language MLM isn't going to cut it in certain verticals. So they're coming up with specific models for different verticals. Makes complete sense. I thought he did a great job of explaining it. And then, of course, to be able to relearn and to train, you're going to need compute power. And that's why, even though they had the three together, they needed that compute layer. Because you need that to create, essentially, the full stack such that someone can come to you create those agents, deploy them, and have it work without having to go off somewhere else to obtain something like a compute layer. So I thought it was excellent the way he described it. And I am super excited to see from the first time, at least for me, this is the first time I've seen them talk about what the three of them are creating together. ASI Create, Learn, and Train and they have successfully brought in kudos. So that was it for today. I always say I like to know what the coins that I've invested in, how they're doing, keep track of what they're doing, also look at their competitors in the space and say how are they faring against competitors to make sure that I've invested in something that's going to grow and really take off in this bull run. And when we looked at crypto within this particular AI, I believe as we go down the list, it is the first that's building customer facing agents with, that has a very large market cap at the moment. And to me, to have all three of these companies together and to get the knowledge base of the individuals that are involved in this, I think this is Fetch is a phenomenal buy, even at today's current price, November, well, it'll be the 26th when you see this, but on the 25th, it's $1.45. I personally, I think it's a bargain. Big dumb animal. Don't do what I do. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. I always say, hope we can make generational wealth together in this bull run. Thanks for watching.